Well, I am excited to meet someone I've followed for a long time, Bethany Hamilton. I have watched you have all your babies on Instagram. I am so honored to have you here. And I want to just start, in case you don't know Bethany, um, would you just tell us a little bit about your story and kind of what you're passionate about these days? Yeah, so I was born and raised in Hawaii into a surfing family. Both my parents love the ocean, <clears throat> taught me and my older brothers how to surf at a young age. And so you could say that the ocean was my playground. <laughs> and I also um, grew up in a house of faith. And so I was just super blessed to have um, God a part of my life and to develop my own childlike faith at a pretty young age. And then um, I lost my arm to a shark when I was 13. And then I kept surfing after that. And I've just kind of continued to pursue um, the life I want to live ever since then. And I've done, you know, I kind of winding down my competitive surfing career. Um, I'm about, about to have my fourth child. So <laughs> yeah, I'm just grateful to God for my life and for all the good and the bad and the beautiful. <laughs> so let's talk about your babies. Um, that They're surfing now, some of them, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> talk just about the season of motherhood and what this has been like for you. I always wanted to be a mom and I actually share entering into motherhood on my documentary. It's called Unstoppable and it goes from childhood to motherhood, but I remember when I first found out I was pregnant, I was kind of disappointed. <laughs> um, and that was really weird to me because, you know, I grew up in a Christian home and I always wanted to have children. But when it actually happened, I was kind of startled. Mm. And I feel like a lot of that was coming from a place of selfishness and just like wanting to do my thing versus allowing God to lead my life and think. God, that I got to have my first child when I did because I love my son and life only got that much better and that much sweeter. And we kind of just continued to live normal life, but brought along my <clears throat> firstborn for the journey, for the ride. And um, yeah, and, and just motherhood has taught me probably more than anything in life and still is. It stretches you every single day. It's been feeling pretty hard lately. My two-year-old's pretty um, challenging, but like he's such, it's like the typical, like he's a ray of sunshine. And then the next minute you're like being stretched to your limits. Um, I'm guessing most moms can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. But yeah, and then I have a five-year-old now and my two-year-old, and then I have one on the way. So yeah, it's safe to say I love motherhood and I have a great husband who's just a super hands-on father. So that makes it that much more funner. So one of the words I know that's been used to describe you is resilient. And I just want to talk about that for just a minute, like what that means to you, what that word means to you. Is that a word that is hard for you to do? Or I mean, it just feels like right now it's probably the most needed thing in the world. Um, we are constantly, daily, regularly hit with things that can bring about anxiety or fear. And it feels like we're having to build more and more resilience just to do life. So talk a little bit about that where that has come from for you? So I think some people are born with more resiliency, especially depending on their childhood or their personality. But I really do believe resiliency can be grown and nourished and something that you kind of develop. Um, it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly what it is. But to me, it's when you just keep going, even when times are hard and you keep looking for the good, even when there's a lot of bad going on and you adapt and you adjust and you make tweaks along the way um, so that you can keep going when things don't feel like they're working um, 100%. <laughs> and so I think for me, just picking up tools along the way um, has been really helpful. You know, you know, I have a lot of grit naturally and learning to surf with one arm at 13 years old 
Um, you know, for those of you, I'm guessing most people listening don't surf, but surfing is probably one of the hardest sports in the world to do. Like it is not an easy sport. The ocean is not um, a super nice and just a happy-go-lucky sort of place all the time. And it's not easier on me than it is on anyone else that I share the ocean environment with. And so you're often kind of pushed to your limits. You have waves just breaking on you over and over and over again. And so I think I feel really blessed to have been grown up in that sport. It's like, I always attribute like most of my resiliency to my faith because my hope is in something that's greater than myself. It's in God and his grace and his redemption and um, him overcoming all the darkness of the world on my behalf. But I always think about surfing taught me a lot too, just mm-hmm. being in the ocean and pushing through physically and mentally. And so, yeah. And then along the way, picking up different tools, like, you know, just being more aware of like, why am I stressed out right now? Like, why do I put so much on my plate? And like, every single time I do that, I end up feeling like anxious and overwhelmed or why do I keep scrolling social media when it like usually leaves me in a worse mood or just shares more unhealthy news around the world? Yeah, I keep going back to that. And so I feel like there's a lot of choices along the way that we can make that will lessen some of these challenges that we're dealing with. Um, So for me, I think of it as like a whole body health. So faith first, nutrition, prioritizing sleep, prioritizing family and relationships, and then getting what you need to get done and kind of putting a lot of the other things on the side or back burner or just letting go of things that don't help your life move forward. And um, yeah, I've just felt a lot of growth um, over the last five, 10 years, um, trying to make, you know, trying to make my life just, you know, overcoming all the challenges along the way. So I, like I kind of mentioned earlier, but motherhood's taught me so much, but after I had my second son, I felt really um, just stressed out, like really easily agitated, you know, I'd drop a cup on the ground and just start crying. And I just didn't know why it wasn't really like the normal Bethany. And then I would wake up at like three in the morning, like just wide awake. The baby wasn't awake. It was just me laying there wide awake. And then I wake up in the morning feeling so thrashed and just not myself. Mm. And so that sent me down like a longer rabbit hole of like figuring out my health which fast forward, um, my health's like, I've always been passionate about health. I already ate like really clean and, but there's some tweaks along the way, like just eating more food and eating more consistently. As women, we have a lot on our plate and I feel like women almost celebrate like eat, drinking coffee instead of eating breakfast or we'll celebrate like, oh, I didn't have time to eat and like I'm starving now at dinner time. And I'm also very easily agitated. (laughs) And so I like learned to problem solve that. We have to become our own problem solvers. Like no one else is going to do it for you. Um, And so if you're having like things that are not good, but they're normal, um, just know that a lot of the not good normal things are things that you can overcome. Like you don't have to be awake at three in the morning, even though that's normal for a lot of people. you don't have to be really short with your children or your husband, even though that's probably pretty normal out there. You can problem solve that and figure out how to be more patient um, and, you know, sleep through the night. And there's resources out there if you're willing to put in the time and work to, you know, just figure it out. <laughs> have there ever been days that you've woken up and been angry or felt sorry for yourself? just with your kids as they're growing up, like, do you, do you ever wake up and just go, oh, I just wish, I wish I had two arms. I wish life were a little bit easier. Well, yesterday, my two-year-old didn't let me get his diaper on and I couldn't get him down for his nap because he was 
I think it was like I'd let him go an hour or two late past his nap, even though it was his normal nap time. But it was just one of those days he needed to go down an hour earlier. <laughs> um, and we did get the diaper on, but he ripped it off right after. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, there's moments that it was less about the one arm and more of just like frustration of motherhood and like trying to find my own calm amid amidst his chaos. Um, so yeah, there's definitely rough days. Um, like anyone, we all have bad days or not so great days. But, you know, we got through it. It wasn't like the end of the world. And um, yeah, I wouldn't want to do it any other way. And I'm not really looking back on life and wanting to change it because this is I'm 20 years past that and there's no point in wishing you could change something when it's your way past it. <laughs> so talk about watching your kids learn resiliency because I feel like the ages your kids are, they're learning everything, right? I mean, everything's new and, and has that been fun to watch in them? It feels like you let them take risk and and be brave. Sure. I'm definitely not a hover mother. <laughs> Um, no offense if anyone is. I just find that um, just wanting them to, you know, of course you catch them or stop them before they do something super crazy, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> letting them learn from their mistakes, I think is really important and kind of letting them fall a little bit here and there. And yeah, it's been so fun watching them. And, you know, my personality is different from theirs. So it's interesting, like working with them and trying not to like impress what is, you know, my approach, but letting them figure out their own approach. And that's been super interesting. I, you know, I don't feel like I'm at a place where I can like give mothering advice, but <laughs> maybe in 10 years from now, but it is, it has been really fun to just learn from them and figure out what works for them and try to support them in a way that, you know, helps them move forward and shine and be their more resilient self. But I have found too, like, there's this kind of balance of like pushing them a little and you know, nudging them in a certain direction, but also like not overdoing that. So for example, my seven-year-old, he loves surfing. He's almost eight now. He's just, he caught on, he got the surfing bug, but he didn't love it at first. Like there was days when he was like, no, I don't want to surf like most kids. I mean, just the other day, they, none of them wanted to go to the playground and then we went anyway and none of them wanted to leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. There's kind of this little balancing act, I think, with the parenting where you're like nudging them, you're challenging them, you're pushing them a little, but then you're also like wanting them to find things that they love, that they're naturally motivated to go after. And so, yeah, my um, seven-year-old, you know, I nudged him a bit, you know, like some days we'd get gummy bears if we went surfing and I'm not all for like bribery with parenting. <laughs> But when it came to surfing, it worked. <laughs> it's like finding the dynamics within with each child and with your family, like what works. And I feel like there's so many polarizing, um, even like entering into the parenting realm, you're like, what's the right way? Like there's so many different ideas and philosophies and extremes and, you know, one person screaming this and the next person screaming that. And you're like, okay, I'm just going to hang out here in the middle. Well, I, it's really fun to watch. If y'all don't follow Bethany on Instagram, it's a really fun experience to watch your kids just explore the world. And Hawaii is not a bad backdrop either. <laughs> yeah, I'm so grateful to be raising children out here. I'm like, I just feel like the rough days, if we just leave the house and go in nature, we're all good. <laughs> well, and I think that that's actually something I wanted to talk to you about because there is so much anxiety right now. And I think you kind of represent the opposite of that. It feels like to me from watching your life. And, and so talk a little bit about even just the choices y'all are making as a family and how nature plays a part in that. Because I really do believe there is something about being outside that, that has helped my kids that when they get into nature, it's like same thing. Like they don't want to go out 
to, we have some land outside of town and they don't want to go because they want to be with their friends, but then they get out there and they get dirty and they're digging holes and they're just happier. I think it's like, I grew up, my childhood was amazing. I was just like rambling around in nature all, like as soon as I was out of school, I was running hard. And I was either surfing or going with my friends, jumping off little, like going snorkeling and just playing in the water um, or, you know, running around in the yard. (laughs) And so with the modernization of society and humanity, um, so much has changed even, I feel like I was like kind of like the last generation to not have um, devices. So I got my first like legit device when I was like 16. (laughs) And I remember I was like instantly addicted to Instagram. And none of my friends had it. And I would be like on there scrolling while they were like hanging out with each other, enjoying. And thank God I caught that at some point and like was able to like let go of it and like kind of come back to um, my grounding. But so now being like the leader of my family, you know, my husband's the leader, but I'm like co-leading with the children. And we've just chosen to try to maintain their childhood as much as possible um, to be more like ours. So in nature, away from devices, you know, we watch a movie like once or twice a month. Um, You know, we'll look up animals on YouTube once a week, you know, very minimalism with devices you know, we're driving in the car, we're looking out the window. I grew up looking out the window. So my children don't have devices. They're not being entertained. I mean, we'll listen to podcasts or stories or music, but um, yeah, they're just being creative. Um, They're constantly creating. And also even, you know, we're choosing to homeschool, but on top of that, we're choosing not to like stack their schedule. So it's like, I've found that our culture thinks that children really need their schedules stacked. It's almost like not even talked about. I don't see it talked about much, but like we don't really stack their schedule. So they do a couple of things throughout the week, but otherwise they're doing more playing free play. And yeah, we also just try to feed them nutritious food. I think nutrition can play a big role in your resiliency, your ability to handle chaos or stress um and then just getting more quality time as a family so prioritizing family time and you know we're eating dinner together we're reading books together um we're playing now we're playing rummy cards so that's really fun I'm like we're playing an adult game now even my five-year-old beats me (laughs) that's awesome and I'm genuinely having fun versus like playing like Candyland you know but yeah and then just like having mom and dad really a part of their life I think they need more time with us that's what I always like recognize in my mom is she gave me so much of her time um even throughout my young childhood years and teenage years and I feel like that gave me the confidence to like face all that I faced um losing my arm and like becoming famous and pursuing a professional career and traveling the world as a young woman by myself and just making the right choices along the way and so yeah I'm just I've learned so much from my mom and that she gave me a lot of her time and so I feel like time is the get best gift we can give to our family and our life. And then two, just trying to like remove whatever is not necessarily off our plate. Yes. I feel like we all want to just like go, 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 do, do, do. We have like noise all the time. There's just like social media, TV, news, like all this stuff. Like after 2020 and 2021, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to like look at less news. Like even like toning that back, like I don't need to know every little thing going on in the world. And so I think like finding our boundaries and like slowing down, um, I'm all about like trying to slow down. And And I say it because I'm not like the queen of being slow. Like I'm a hustler. I love to go and do and be and like chase and um succeed and I, I want to be the best at whatever it is that I'm doing so I'm really attracted to the idea of slowing down because I know I need it and it doesn't come as natural for me and so I'm like choosing to like slow down and just 
um, be still and trust in the Lord and be with my family, look my children in the eyes um, and spend time with my husband and, um, you know, and the other people that we love as well. I want to end with a couple questions that our listeners sent in. And I just think a few of these you'll be you'll have great answers for. Questions that came in from this, Bethany, were just overwhelming. We had um, we asked just what are the things on your heart? Like what are you wondering about? What are you curious about? Just trying to get a pulse of where people are and what they need. And it was just so overwhelming the the questions that came in. And so here's a couple. Um, how can I encourage my people in their faith without forcing it on them? Because I think this is something as a parent, and your kids are right at that right age where you're probably, you know, wanting them to have their own relationship with God. What does that look like for you guys? I think being consistent and just reading God's word to our children. Um, I'm a little guilty of reading the child child Bible, which I think is great too, because it stimulates really cool conversations, but actually reading the word of God, because God says that his word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And I think like my mom, she always read the Bible to me, um, primarily Psalms and Proverbs, because I think it's like the easiest, but there's so much goodness in there. <laughs> and then just like living by example, we pray together. We will try to do at least a Bible study in the morning. Almost most mornings we do that. Thankfully, our life is slow enough that we can do that. I know a lot of people are like rushed in the morning. So finding a time, like if it means doing one less sport a week so that you can get your quality time in and um, have a Bible study together, or you do it in the car while you're driving, um, just trying to get a little organized and prioritized. If, if your faith in God is something you want to instill in your children, um, you just have to be open and verbal and speak that into their lives. <clears throat> and I think one thing that's really impacted, you know, my husband and I in, in our marriage, and we now want to instill that in our children is the grace of God. And so when I look at the Christian faith, like God says that John 16, 33, I have said these things to you that in me, you will have peace. In the world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Mm. And to me, that's like the foundation of our faith is that, hey, we're going to have trouble, but in God, we're going to have peace and that God has overcome all the sin and death and darkness of the world. And that is his gift to you and I. <clears throat> and so... Just remembering that, and then what does that mean, that his grace is sufficient for you and I? And so those days when you get to the end of the day and you feel like you failed as a wife or a mother, just remember that God's grace is sufficient. And treating our children that way, I feel like we, you know, you, know, you want your children to be well-behaved, you want them to be kind, you want them to listen, you want them to be respectful. You also want them to just like rock it in this world and like have fun and pursue things that they love. But, you know, they're not perfect. They're like you and I, they are sinners. And so having grace on them and like living that out um, on a day to day basis, I think is so important. So that would be my encouragement is just be active. And if you are busy, like trying to figure out a way to incorporate it, whether it's on the car ride, like, I will never allow my teenagers to have headphones on while we're driving together and maybe even have like, hey, no phones on the way to school if they are older, you know, um, just finding a time where it's like we have a mutual agreement that we're going to spend time together and not spend time with our devices. This is a passion for you. I mean, I know you are starting a mother daughter little gathering. Talk about that passion. I have a mentorship program for my heart is for the teenage girls, but it's alongside of their mothers because moms are the number one in their teenage girls' lives. And if they're not, the goal is to get them to be number one, it's all faith-based. Um, we bring in a lot of tools and ideas. We talk about a lot of the hard subjects that a lot of moms don't want to talk to their teenage daughters about, like drugs, alcohol, um, boys, relationships. 
but also anxiety, stress. Um, wow. We're covering things that either sometimes mom doesn't think about or doesn't know how to deal with or something that mom might be scared to talk about or maybe daughter won't be accepting of mom bringing up this subject. But with Bethany there, <laughs> it makes it a yes. little easier. And yeah, yeah. it's been awesome and really fun and life-giving for me and um, a lot of moms have just been so stoked. (laughs) As we close, I would love for you just to speak directly to them because we have a lot of teen girls that listen as well. So if you could just wrap us up with just a word for them of what you pray for them, what you hope for them. Oh my gosh. Um, Girls, you're beautiful. You have value and worth in this world. There's so much good and fun to be had out there. And so I'm just cheering you on to find the good and fun that's like beautiful and life-giving and just know that whatever challenges you're facing in your life, like you can overcome them. You have a God that loves you who's waiting to be a part of your journey or maybe already is. Um, And it's likely that you have an awesome family supporting you too. And so allow them to be a part of it too. And just know that um, those days when you feel like just down, um, there's more to life for you and that you can overcome it. So focus on the good and beautiful and become your own problem solver and just, um, yeah, I'm cheering you on. (laughs) 